I'd like to introduce a former Muslim Imam, Mario Joseph who became a Christian after studying Quran. It started one person asked about who Jesus was. He tried to find out Jesus in the Quran and he compared Jesus to Muhammad. Soon he found out Jesus was superior than Muhammad. After he became a Christian, his family tried to kill him but God allowed him to escape that situation. My great-grandparents are from Turkey, but they came and settled down in India, in the South Kerala. When I was in the womb of my mama, there was an infection for her womb. So all the doctors said the child will die in the womb. She did not accept anyone or any advice. She prayed to Allah saying, Allah, life belongs to you. So I know you can give life. If you give life for this baby, I will surrender this baby for you. That was her offering or a surrender. And uh, miraculously, I, I was born. All thought I will die in the womb. Because I have been dedicated to God. Uh, the, while I was working in a Muslim masjid as an imam, uh, as a parish priest, once I preached in my parish that Jesus Christ is not God. For me, God was only Allah. And I believe Allah never married, so no son for Allah. So I preached there that Jesus is not God. Then somebody asked me, who is Jesus? From the crowd. Maybe a Muslim, but he asked me, who is Jesus? I was preaching, he is not God. But the question, who is he? To know who is he, I read the entire Quran once again. 114 chapters, 6,666 verses in Quran. When I read it, the name of Prophet Muhammad, I found in Quran four places. But the name of Jesus I found 25 places. There itself I was little confused. Why Quran giving more preference for Jesus? And second thing, I could not see any woman's name in Quran. Prophet Muhammad's mother name or wife's name or children's name, no. In the Quran there is only one woman name I found, Maryam, the mother of Jesus. No other woman name. And then about Jesus, when I read chapter 3 verses, 45 to 55 verses, there are 10 points which Quran makes about Jesus. The first thing Quran says Kalimatullah, the Arabic word which means word of God. And the second thing Ruhullah which means spirit of God. And the third is Isal Masih which means Jesus Christ. So Quran gives the name for Jesus, word of God, spirit of God, Jesus Christ. And then Quran says that Jesus spoke when he was very small, like two days old after his birth. He began to speak. Quran says that Jesus created a live bird with mud. He took some mud, formed a bird, when he breathed it into it, became a live bird. So I think that he can give life. He give life to a mud, clay. And then Quran says that Jesus cured a man born blind and a man with leukoderma, leprosy, etc. Continuously Quran says that Jesus give life to dead people. Jesus went to heaven, he is still alive and he will come again. When I saw all these things in Quran, my thinking was what the Quran says about uh, Muhammad. You know, according to Quran, Prophet Muhammad is not the word of God, not the spirit of God, never spoke when he was two days old, never created any bird with mud, never cured any sick people, never raised any dead people. He himself died. And according to Islam, he is not alive and he will not come back. So there is a lot of difference between these two prophets. I, I, I don't call Jesus as God, you know. My idea was he's a prophet, but he's a prophet greater than Muhammad. So one day I went to my teacher, the one who taught me 10 years in Arabic college, and I asked him, teacher, how the God created the universe? Then he said, God created the universe through the word. Through the word. Then my question, word is creator or creation? Must clear it. My question, whether the word of God is creator or creation? Quran says Jesus is word of God. If my teacher said the word of God is creator, which means Jesus is creator, then the Muslims must become Christian. Suppose if he said the word is creation, he will be trapped. You know why? He said everything created through the word. Suppose if he said the word is creation, then how the God created the word? Wow. So he cannot say the word is creator, cannot say the word is creation. So he was quite angry. He pushed me out of his room and said, word is not the creator, not the creation. You get out from me, he said. So then when he said that, I told my teacher, word is not the creator, not the creation. That is why Christian says, word is son of God. Then he told me, if there is a son for God, I must show him the wife of God. Without wife, no chance for having a son. Then I showed a portion from the Quran. Quran says that God can see without eyes. God can talk without tongue. God can hear without ears. 
It's written in Quran. I said, if that is the case, he can have a child without a wife. So there we have a big argument. And you know, at the end, what I did, I took my Quran, kept on my chest, and I said, Allah, tell me what should I do? Because your Quran says Jesus is still alive, Muhammad is no more. You tell me whom should I accept? After my prayer, I opened Quran. I didn't ask anyone, I asked only to my Allah. When I opened Quran, I saw chapter 10, verse 94. You know what Quran says? فَإِنْ كُنْتُمْ فِي شَكِّمْ مِمَّا أَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ فَاسْأَلِ الَّذِينَ يَقْرَأُونَ الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ لَقَدْ جَاءَكَ الْحَقِّ If you have any doubt in this Quran which I give to you, go and read the Bible or ask the people, those who read the Bible. The truth is already revealed in that. So if you ask me, who made me Christian? It's not any fathers, it's not any sisters, it's not any bishops, it's not any cardinal, it's not even Pope. But the Holy Quran converted me to Christianity. So after seeing this, I decided to study Bible. And uh, I went to a, a retreat center called the Divine Retreat Center, that's in India. And then while I was doing my Bible studies, there are a lot of points which touched me from Bible. The first day, uh, Father read John chapter 1 verse 1 onwards. In the beginning there was a word, the word was with God, the word was God, the word became flesh. So my Holy Quran says Jesus is the Word of God. Now the Holy Bible also says Jesus is the Word of God. So I found it both is very similar. And I was happy to know that I need Quran and I need Bible both. You know, I was in a mood like one day become Christian, one day Muslim, one day Christian, you know, I, I need both. While I was thinking like that, again one more word I heard, that was John chapter 1 verse 12. Such a lovely word for me because it's written in Bible, if anyone accept Jesus, Jesus will give them power to become children of God. In all the verses of the Quran, Allah calls the human being slaves and Allah is master. Master cannot love the slave, slave cannot love the master. I don't like to be called by someone a slave. Quran says you are my slave. But when I heard John chapter 1 verse 12, it says, if you believe in Jesus, Jesus will give you power to become children of God. So immediately I said, I need Jesus because I want to be a child of God. There I began to call my God Daddy. Till then I never knew that I can call God Daddy. You know, Jesus taught the prayer in Aramaic language, Abun Doshmayo, our God who art in heaven, Abun he called. In Arabic language, Abun means our dad, you know. And if you ask me, I cannot express my joy whenever I call my dad. You know, whenever I call God dad and whenever I think that the creator of the universe is my dad, I have a kind of joy which I cannot express. It's beyond my, you know, experience cannot explain. Only you can understand by experience. So I really love to call my God dad. There I decided to accept Jesus. And one fine day my dad came there and it was very horrible because he beat me very badly and there was bleeding from my nose and I was unconscious. And then he took me home. Uh, I don't know how he took me, but somehow he took me home because I was unconscious. Uh, when I came in conscious, I was in a small room without any cloth. I was completely naked. And my hands and legs were chained very tight. And I could not even speak because there was chili powder in my mouth, nose, eyes. And, you know, wherever the wound was there in my skin, they applied some chili there also for, for me to get burning. And it, it, they did so much because it is written in Quran more than 18 places to fight with the non-believers. And it is written in some places to kill the one who reject Islam. So my dad is obeying the law of Quran, so he wants to do something. And uh, within a few days, uh, they did not give me food or water and I, I was dried off. And one day my lift broke and I was trying to lick little blood to wet my throat, then my brother came and passed urine in my mouth, you know, they said that, that's a punishment for you to believe in Christ. And then uh, after so many days, like without food or water, my stomach became wrong and my entire body became weak and I became like a bone. Like, finally, I lost even my memory power. I can't even think because no food, no water, so like a dead man. And I don't know how many days, more than 20 days it was there in the room. And one day my dad came to room and he removed my chain and I was not aware. And he chopped my throat very deep to know is there, is there life in my body. 
So when he chopped very deep, I couldn't breathe. So when I opened my eye, I could see a big knife in his hand. So my dad said, it's your last moment, no hope. He said, if you need Allah, I will allow you to leave. If you need Jesus, I will kill you. I, I know that, you know, when I was in the womb itself, all said I will die. But they loved me so much and they, they prayed and they got the life. And now they want to kill me. So I don't know. And I, according to, I, I know my dad well, he will kill me. So when I know that it's my last moment of death, I, I thought, anyway, Jesus died, but he came back. If I believe in Jesus and I, I to may get my life, you know, a kind of a joy, you know, it is better to die in Jesus. When I decided, suddenly a light fell on my forehead, you know, a moonlight, something fell on my, and there was a kind of electric shock, something passed throughout my vein. I was so energized, you know, from somewhere the energy flow into my body and I couldn't control myself. That much energy there was in my bone. I pulled my dad's hand down and I cried out, Jesus! When I cried out, my dad fell on the ground. When he fell with the knife which he was holding, there was a big bone for his chest. And there was bleeding and some kind of foe was coming from his mouth and he was screaming, you know. And all were shocked, my brothers and mom, my sister, they, they don't know what's happening. So they thought my dad is already dead, so they took my dad and ran to hospital. When they were running to hospital, they forgot to lock my room from outside. And I was in an energy which I cannot tell you because I was only born. No food, so many days, more than 20 days, bony, but very energy. So I just came out and wore the dress of my dad, I ran to taxi stand, took a taxi, straight away went to Porta. On the way, the taxi man, he was a Christian, so he bought for me some kanji juice and everything. And he knows my struggle and he taught me to put down. And he contacts me even now. He's a very good friend of mine, the taxi driver. So I went, came to Porta again. That day, really I understood my Jesus is alive even now. When I call him for my need, he, he saved me. So which means he is present here, even when I am talking to you. So that, that is my life. Everywhere I know that he is present. Because now after my conversion, 18 years, I never, I never thought that the Muslims will allow me to live 18 years. And I have even preached in Middle East, where the Arabs came, but nothing happened. So which means uh, my Jesus is alive and he is protecting me. Is your life in danger? Are people still trying to kill you? Yes, even after, after this experience, so many times they tried to kill me. So thereafter, no contact with my, with my sisters, whom I love so much. My mom, I really love her, but no hope. I, I can, I, humanly speaking, no hope. God can touch them within a moment, so I am praying. And even if they did not accept Christianity, I, I am always saying, Jesus, please take them to heaven. Where I am, I need them. So that's my prayer always. Yeah. And you're not afraid to die? Never, never. No, they said we are. The fear of death is actually a foolishness. If you believe in Muhammad and die, you know what will be your situation? Prophet Muhammad died, people buried, and afterwards we don't know where he went. If I believe in him and die, I don't know where I will go. But Christ, who died, but he came back. So I have a hope, if I die in Christ, I too can come back. So it is better be sure of death, and that should be in Christ. Because Jesus very clearly said, I am going to my father's house. Romans, uh, sorry, John chapter 14, verse 3. I am going to my father's house. There are so many rooms, and I will arrange a room for you, then I will come back to take you. So, you know, I am so happy to know that my Jesus is arranging big bungalow for me there, big house. Once if he finished the work, he will come back to take me. I think it is a big bungalow because last 18 years, Muslims tried to kill me, they could not kill, which means still the construction is going on. Once if it is ready, then he will come back to take me. Then only the Muslims can kill me. Till then, nobody can. So I am not afraid of death because that is a fact. Only thing I am thinking after my death, what? To have eternal life, you need Jesus.